FM. The family is number one. And we're your number one family radio. Inspiration. 105.9. A very warm welcome to Health Break right here on Inspiration 105.9 FM. Today is a very special day. It's the 11th day in the month of October 2022 and is the International Day of the Girl Child. Countries around the world celebrating this very day. As much as possible, we are looking at recognizing the girls' rights and the unique challenges they face around the world, highlighting some of those things in the conversations we're having across the globe, particularly to reflect how very important the girl child is and how we can actually get them to live better lives. I would like to start first of all with a lady. It's the girl's child day, so definitely we'll celebrate in that regard, starting first of all with pharmacist Kubiat Achibo. She's a pharmacist at Heartland Alliance, live in our studio this morning. Good morning to you. Welcome to Inspiration FM. Good morning. Thank you. Great to have you here. Thank you. So, I should start much. first of all by saying Happy Girl Child Day. Thank right? you. Happy Girl Child Day to you too. <laughs> all yes. right, then. Also in the studio this morning, I have the only man in our midst standing with us with his hands lifted high to say Happy Girl Child Day. So, that's I'm um, introducing at this point Barista Ini Achibong, Human Rights Officer at Heartland Alliance. It's a pleasure to have you here. Same thing here. Thank you very much, Ima. Welcome, okay. listeners. All right, then I also have another lady, two ladies, one man, or possibly three, including me. I'd like to introduce a very special one, DJ Ritzy. Good morning to you. It's a pleasure to have you on the program. Good morning, Ima. I'm excited to be here. Okay, just to let you know that DJ Ritzy is the director of Ritzy's Life Enhancement Foundation, and she's very, very particular about the girl child, such that she pushes advocates about the girl child living a very well-rounded life with her girls alert right yes Fantastic. that's true so then you're the right person to also sit here to talk about the girl child today our time is now our rights our future that is a theme for the 2022 international day of the girl child so we look at the fact that girls are leaders girls are change makers girls are ready for a decade of acceleration towards achieving so much more and we can actually talk about how much all the adolescent girls we have in Nigeria. The statistics put forward by UNICEF shows that Nigeria is home to more than 25 million adolescent girls aged 10 to 19 years. So we can see that statistics. And then it just means that we have to be intentional about the well-being of the girl child. So it's the right thing to do today, you know, celebrating the girl child and also bringing on the front bone at this conversation. I'd like to start, first of all, with Pharmacist Skubiat. What do you think about the theme for this year? Our time is now, our rights, our future. Okay, thank you very much. So, I, first of all, I want to actually wish all the girls happy International Girls Day. It's actually a day of the girl child, so we need to celebrate them all around the globe. So, for this year's theme, our time is now, our rights, our future. So, for every girl child, it's actually a time to rise to greatness. It's a time to actually explore more as a girl child. It's a time to speak up in any situation we find ourselves. It's a time to tell the world that, oh, we are girls. We are not just left there by the side, you know, even in our families. We shouldn't just be left and, oh, she's a girl child. She cannot do this. She can't do that. So it's a time to rise up and then speak up as a girl child. Show yourself in all aspects, family-wise, in your office, in your job, in anything you're assigned to do. You need to tell the world that it's your time to manifest. So I, I, in the future, concerning our future, our rights as a girl child, most of us are being, you know, pushed aside. Oh, not, not actually now, but before, before now. It was that a girl child can now actually do what the, the boy child can do. But I think in today's world, the mm-hmm. girl child is actually exploring more to make sure she stands we're seeing, out. We're seeing how different yes. that is from the yes. narrative we're used Yes, to. from the narrative, yes. So it's actually a very different thing now all around the globe that a girl child is actually recognized everywhere in the nation, in Nigeria, as a country, outside here. So it's actually our time, our future, and our rights. So to every girl child, I wish that you stand tall to this theme of the 2022 International Girl Child Day to make sure you stand out and you speak up about your rights and your future. Thank okay, you. I'd like to go straight to DJ Ritz here. Okay. Well, looking at the theme for this year, which you just spoken to, um, our time is now, our right to our future. What does that speak to you? Um, it speaks 
motivation to me, inspiration to me, that we all owe these girls the ability to inspire them, to motivate them, to be great people. A whole lot of them, they have dreams and they've been scared, you know, of um, utilizing their talent. So this is actually a call to action that, girl, your time is now. You have to stand up with God on your side, with hard work, with consistency. You can be anything you want to be. So don't wait again. The time is now. We have to stand up to our right, stand up for what we want, stand up to chase whatever we dream we wish, you know, and then get to the height we wish to attend. Fantastic to the only man in our midst at this point to ask. I know you're a legal practitioner, so when we talk about rights, and that's more emphasized in the theme for this year, you know, the rights aspect, why do you think it's very important to emphasize on this as the theme has been put out there this year? Thank you very much, Ima. We cannot even begin the conversation about the rights of the girl child without a reference to rights. Girls, if you like, are differently abled than boys. And this recognition has been there even from the beginning of time. So even some of the things that later turned out to be inimical to the girl child we actually came out of attempts convoluted, maybe mistaken, that now, you know, to protect the child, which now led to the child, uh, the girl child, um, being the subject of uh, oppression from society. So we even recognize it, the international community even recognize it as far back as 1924, the declaration on the rights of the child was there. In 1959, there was another declaration on the rights of the child. And then when the uh, International Convention on uh, Civil and Political Rights was created in 1967, um, Article 10 of it um, paid tribute to the rights of the child. The same also happened in um, Articles 23 and 24 of the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. So now when the United Nations came in 2011 to create this day, the day of the girl child, they paid tribute to all of that recognition, but they said one thing, that the girl child, there were different aspects of the girl child from other, other children. And that's why this day was set aside especially to commemorate that difference and the fact that we need to protect girl children because not just are they immature, not just are they mentally underdeveloped, with respect to adults, they are girls. And we have seen in situations, even in situations of war or conflict, where girl children have been used as even weapons of war to attack, you know, the other community. They are taken... Rape, we can't rule out the you know um, facts about how the, um, the girl child is most hit. You know, we talk about women, the children during war or conflict moments. We see that they are most hit, so they become more vulnerable. Exactly. In all in all instances. Exactly, and so in this, it's in recognition of this that the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child was created, and in 2005, this country took another bold step to create the the Child Rights Act. In 2007, a I would say follow suit with the child rights law and on the heels of this child rights law the Aquaibum state government created eventually the family courts that are now working to look at the interest of children generally but also in particular the rights of the child and so there are you know procedures available for remedying the difficulties the legal and rights related problems that girl children have okay what's also very significant is the fact that there's also the aspect of being proactive we've seen quite a number of persons just avoid that situation of waiting till something really gets wrong so i'll just go straight to dj Ritzi because i know where you get to think about how to remedy some of the situations you the challenges over time and then you realize that there is need to actually safeguard the well-being of the child the girl child and the, so you came up with the girls alert yes <clears throat> yes about that particularly i see that as an aspect of being proactive trying as much as possible to get these girls aware of their rights of um, what they how they can actually live life better yeah that's true Girl Alert actually is an educative sensitization, you know, we do specifically for girl children. And in the past three years, because this year is going to be a fourth edition, in the past three years we've been to schools to sensitize them with seasoned, resourced persons, medical doctors, barristers, to talk to them, tell them about their rights, 
tell them about their bodies, the changes in their bodies, high, personal hygiene, give them career talks. These are the things we've done over the three years. We've also conducted essay competitions just to encourage them to study hard, you know, to come out of their shells, to put their talents and their intelligence to use while they win prizes. So this to me are ways, you know, in which I use to encourage them, to motivate them, to come out of their boxes, be outstanding, be different, be unique, and then to head for their goals. How do you think this is actually enhancing their well-being? It is because um, we've had testimonies okay. from parents and from the children. We've had them come to more knowledge about themselves because there's some things parents don't, not that they can't talk about, but they always shy away from talking about with their kids. And then there's some, also sometimes teachers don't really go deep down to intimate these girls on certain issues like child abuse, rape, you know, the cancers and everything. And these are the things we take time every time we have an outreach to educate them properly, you know, and we have professionals talk to them, you know, so okay. they, ha they ask questions and their questions are answered. Okay, I'll just go to Heartland Alliance, pharmacist Skubiat. She just talked about something very key, you know, parents not talking to their girl children or even the schools not willing to do the for instance the sex education the way it should be done or even in the house so yeah. if we want to actually safeguard you know the well-being of a girl child we know that we have to be proactive yes you can come up here and talk about the issues that you get to see on a daily basis at Hartman alliance rape cases abusers and all that but then it is very key that we get to prevent some of them even though we know we have interventions to cater for some of that. So can you talk about that aspect in terms of the intervention that Hartman Alliance brings on board and how we can actually take those proactive steps? For Hartman Alliance as an organization, so far, thanks to the wife of the Deputy Governor of Akwaibom State, who has actually, you know, gone around to, he has given us a mandate to sensitize the state as a state about rape and sexual abuse. Did you say the deputy governor or the governor himself? The wife of the governor of Akwaibom State, sorry. Okay. So she has been able to give us a mandate to actually talk to a girl child and then report rape case or any case of sexual abuse. So, so far as an organization, we have been able to arrest all those cases. Most of them, so as a family, let me start from the family background. As a girl child, you need to actually notice all those red flags coming to you. Like you're with your cousin. Some even go to the essence of a brother raping a sister or probably having sex with her consistently. And some don't report immediately, but some actually report immediately. So for that, as a parent, you need to educate your girl child on those red flags coming. How is it coming? What are those advances that he is trying to make at you in the family or maybe while dropping her off in school? Some even perform all these, all these things on their way to drop either the niece or the brother or the sister in school. So we need to actually tell them those red flags. Oh, he's buying some gifts to you aside what mommy gave to you to take off to school. He's actually getting something on the way. Oh, take this. Or trying to make some moves. Like, oh, how are you touching your cheek, touching your sexual characteristics like the girl child, the breast. Sorry, I will just be so blunt here. The breast or actually the vagina. So you need to tell them. Don't just use a name and say touching somewhere. You need to tell them if a man or a boy tries to touch your breast, touch your vagina, touch where it's more sensitive, touch where it's only mommy that actually has the right to do that. Please report immediately. The conversations you take to the schools. You yes, know, to that's the conversation. Yes, to sensitize the girl child. Yes. So you actually tell them, even in the school, you know, some teachers or otherwise, they can actually, you know, try to do some things that the girl child should not actually be done to. So please, when going to the convenience or to, probably to eat yourself, please, as a girl child, go with a fellow female teacher. Avoid going close to, oh... Uncle, I want to pee, I want to yeah. wee. No, please don't. Don't go to the convenience with a male teacher. Something could, could happen. So you talk about discouraging that. Yes, as much please, as you possible. should try to discourage so that. So the yes. that we can prevent some of the abuses that happen. It prevent the abuse, possible. yes, from okay, coming Okay, I'd like to hear from Barista Achibong. Yeah, thank you very much. One of the, the key points of our intervention is advocacy. And part of that advocacy is community-level advocacy. So we've had calls to go to several communities around the state to inform them of key developments in the law 
and in government policy around rape and sexual harassment, gender-based violence. And during those times, we lay out some of the, the indices, some of the early warning signs, like she has said, um, that can lead to sexual harassment, to rape, to the abuse of the girl child. We also lay out what the position of the law is, because the law has improved considerably uh, from the past, making it very possible now to put away people who are accused With of... the presence of the violence against persons prohibition. Yes, uh, uh, law. And other laws, you know... That, uh, that are in place as well. Yeah, that are in place right now, making it even possible for you to be um, charged with okay. and sentenced without you having to penetrate the sexual organ of your victim. And so with these kind of interventions, these sensitization programs that we've had, we've seen um, traditional rulers and community leaders coming out to, yes, coming to say that we stand with you and we stand with the government and we will expose anyone that we find has um, been guilty of this. So there is an improvement. And if you see the numbers that are now coming out of the communities, it's thanks to this advocacy that we've created, not only about our own services, but the services of other organizations that we partner with. Okay. Guess you're listening to Health Break this Tuesday morning. I have in the studio resource persons talking about the International Day of a Girl Child and particularly the focus is on enhancing the well-being of a girl child. Today, 11th of October 2022, we are marking the International Day of a Girl Child across the globe and we are lending our voices to these conversations on how the girl child can live a better life. And the focus is also on prevention, taking proactive steps to even avoid some of those abuses, some of those um, violent related, you know, acts that we get to see and how we can further safeguard the well-being of the girl child, safeguard the status of the girl child as much as possible in our society. Because when you see the statistics, you get worried. They are mostly affected, more vulnerable to a lot of issues. I'll just go back to the Jiritsi. Before I do that, you can send your messages to the WhatsApp number 0906 030 0906-030- 308705. The numbers to call in with as well to be part of the conversation 0818 222 9105 and 0905 995 1059 to talk about the girl child. That's what is in focus this morning how we can further safeguard their health, safeguard them from abuse and other harmful practices in the society and get them to live better lives. Did you read, see, back to you at this point. Okay. Um, what's most concerning for you as you go into the trenches with, you know, your intervention or with your um, campaign, you know, for the girl child, the girl alert? Um, our concerns are basically child abuse, rape, and violence, domestic violence. You know, a whole lot of people maltreat children, maltreat girls, especially um, some people that maybe some mothers that had to remarry another man and the man in the course of that, you know, could maltreat the girl, abuse her and all of that. We also get to see a whole lot of teenage pregnancies and we realize that these girls, they don't really know much about themselves. They don't know about their hormones, their cycle, their health, and a whole lot of things. And these are the areas we really want to focus on on this year's Girl Alert 4.0. We're going into the rural areas in the three senatorial districts of Akwaba Sibum State to see how we can also reach out to the girls in the trenches, like you said. You know, because I believe that they need this information most. The ones around here in town, at least they are more enlightened. Okay. Their parents talk to them and all of that. But those ones in the villages, we'll, we'll come back to you. We okay. have a caller. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the program. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Um, Miss Philip, I'm calling from you. Please go ahead. Um, I'm very, very much happy. I really appreciate the program you are running on because personally, I'm actually... My next student of you knew you, but actually I couldn't completely finish. I just had to get something else. But the girl child is one of the most important plan of nature. That is the first thing they should understand first. Secondly, they should also know why they are there in this world before they begin to look at the other characteristics. And due to the environment that we are living in right now, computer and everything, it has even demoralized so much value that a lot of them, they don't even know the value of a woman. If that it's very much put into their mindset. I think a lot of prostitution could have been cut down because for a woman to give her body up for that cause, just
just to have pleasure, maybe for money for one. They forget that they are the very giver of life. The value of life okay. starts with the woman. Okay, so and emphasis on value concept. system. Yes, the value concept, that's a factor. All yes. right, so thank you. They can be able to understand that their education of academics, they come secondly because when a girl child, whether educated or not, knows the value of who she is and what she is and what she can do. They say, train up a woman. You have, you have given a generation to, a, to, to somebody. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. You said uh, quite a number of things. Emphasis on value system. I'll just go back to DJ Ritzy. You're trying to conclude your thought, particularly talking about teenage pregnancy. I am aware of the statistics. If you go to the demographics um, survey carried out in 2018, you see the alarming statistics of teenage pregnancy. So we can relate. It's still a problem. In the remote areas, we have less um, sensitization happening. Yeah. Okay. That's why I want to focus more on the rural areas this year. 4.0, that's the yes, um, girls yes, alert. Yes. That's the fourth edition, that's what it means. Yeah, fourth edition. We're trying to reach out to 3,000 girls in the three senatorial districts of Akwaibom State. Okay, yes. so I'll just go back to Hatton Alliance again. For what you're doing in terms of uh, reacting to a number of issues that we see on ground, we know that you have safe spaces. Yes. Let's hear about that as well. Okay, thank you. So for us as an organization, Normally, we are implementing for the USID-funded HIV and AIDS project. So, so far, we implement for every girl child, most of them, because of the abuse and everything, sexual violence, they, at some point, they become positive for HIV because they don't know the status of the rapist, so they come up positive for HIV. So, we actually have a very safe space for them. We encourage that, okay, once an abuse takes place or any violence or whatsoever cause, it should be reported immediately within the first 24 hours. We have our downliners who are always there to actually take up the calls and then you can actually take up the victim to our office. So we have a SAC center. SAC is S-A-R-C, Sexual Assault and Referral Center, which was actually commissioned. We have been authorized to actually arrest all those cases. So once they come in, we have some preventive measures to actually keep them off. Probably for those who are not yet positive for HIV, we try to prevent them from contacting the virus after the incidents have taken place. And those that later come up positive, we actually treat them because we can't just send them away like that so we give them a safe space to actually know oh we are here we stand for you we stand for your rights and just as my colleague said the barrister so from there we try to take up the case and then we have never failed mm. on any case yes about that because yes. i'd like to hear from barrister Chibon talking about some of these cases ensuring the survivors get justice thank you very much so heartland alliance runs one-stop shops including at least four in aqua Ibom state one in uh, uyo one in ikare one in uh, eket and then one in oron in these one-stop shops and why we call them one-stop shops is that you get everything that you need in in terms of health in terms of health, health we'll come back to you let's health. take this call welcome to the program what's your uh, name where are you calling from good morning my name is Imano Uro. let's have your take please i want to say a special grace of God for us to minimize rape, at least at the level of teenagers. Women have to respect themselves in the first place. In those days, women used to respect themselves in age. Okay, so, so we have someone with a mindset already calling because now you're, for instance, blaming you know, the survivors. We see that happen a whole lot. So when as you say saying, respect themselves, what do you mean? You, saying, there's yes, no blame women, for the perpetrator, right? With, with, with your apology, women, as yes, you can see now, they're trying to walk naked. Mm, that's naked. not even a justification. You see, this is the mindset that we have. This is a different conversation, actually. We can't finish that on this show. But then when people come up and say, oh, because of the way a woman is dressed, so what happens to the one-year-old or even the month-year-old that are getting raped? A very key question to ask. But then we don't have time for that conversation. I'll just go back to Barista Achibo. Yes. So, as he rounds off. So the one-stop shop, just to help. Yeah, mm -hmm. Embedded in the one-stop shop is also legal and human rights services. And it was one of the key reasons why the government marked our OSS in Uyo out as a sexual assault referral center, meaning that not only can we take care of your health difficulties and challenges after you've been assaulted, but we'll also take it from there and um, help you navigate the criminal justice terrain with the mm. police and the court system. Towards getting justice. Yes, and uh, I need to say that we don't walk alone. So at some point we involve the Federation Internationale des Abogadas. Um, That's FIDA. FIDA. Yes, and the Sexual and Gender-Based Violence Directorate of the Ministry of Justice, which is affiliated with... So it's a collaboration. Yes, Office of the Wife of the Governor. So in this way we've been able to 
and intervene in a number of cases, including a case involving a five-year-old in Oran who was repeatedly raped by someone close to the royalty in that community. And we got this fellow arrested, processed, investigated, and is standing trial. So you just said five-year-old. Possibly she was naked. Okay. I'm just and saying, that's the mindset. Yeah. So, that's the disturbing mindset. I want to come today. Don't, 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 don't mind that guy. I don't understand what he was saying. Well, if you were talking about um, girls going naked, why don't you rape mad women that, you know, are stuck naked on the streets? Anything, yes. Yeah. So why is it that those are even covered up or covered to some extent is a problem? We really do not have time for that conversation, particularly looking at the perpetrators and how we tend to possibly shield them or most times the survivors are blamed for even getting in trouble or getting into that mix of getting raped or being abused. You agree with me? These are the things you see every day, right? Well, as, a, as an organization, we don't blame them because some of them is not their fault. Mm. So we don't blame any victim of rape or sexual abuse. We don't. Okay. We need to actually stand by them to make sure they get themselves out because it's not actually an easy sight, you know. Once you think about it, the depression and everything. Mental yes, health mental issues. Mental health issues, Okay, yes. so we'll come back again some other time. This is a conversation to keep on not just for today, 11th of October, which is the International Day of the Girl Child. Just to add, as an organization, most women need to screen for cervical cancer, yes. Mm -hmm. So we, are, we also Very do important. that. Also and do actually that. free, yes. So please free. do, to every girl child, yes. Probably I could drop my number so that you please can call it for them. They will actually come for cervical cancer screening because cancer of the service is actually rampant as we speak. So let them come. It's actually free of charge. If anything is actually noticed that we can actually refer the one that we can handle, we handle All it right immediately. Then. Your number? And even, yes, 080 3231 So they can actually call that number. We could refer them in all our one-stop shops and including sexually transmitted infections. So we also treat that. It's free of charge. So it's a way of the girl child so that those that are able you know that some that are not actually buoyant to actually get to the pharmacy and then pick up the jobs. So please, for those that cannot actually do that, you know, they're not buoyant enough, please, you can actually stop by the one-stop shop. Okay, one sentence, did you read okay. okay. I just want to say, parents should get closer to mm. their children, to their girls, because a whole lot of them do cannot confide in their mom. They are scared because of probably how the parents treat them. So I think you should go closer to your girl. So if they have challenges or they see some red flags, they'll be able to confide in you and you'll be able to advise properly. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for coming on the program. I'm Barista Achibong. It was a pleasure having you come to celebrate in the mix of the women. My name Email Ima Dem to stay with us. Thank you very much. Inspiration FM.